Can you hear me? Hello, everybody. My name is Daniel Kipper. I'm working for Oracle, and currently I'm focusing mainly on EFI stuff, but sometimes on KXEC or something like that. Okay, uh, today I would like to say a few words about uh, EFI support development for Zen. And uh, I would like to say uh, about three layers of this. Of this. Uh, one of most important things is uh, EFI support in uh, Zen Hypervisor. Uh, another thing important in uh, this is uh, DOM0 kernel uh, EFI support which depends on uh, EFI support in uh, Zen Hypervisor. And uh, later I will tell very shortly about EFI support in guests. Okay. Uh, EFI support currently uh, works in uh, Zen. It is available starting from Zen 4.2 and it was uh, prepared by Jan Bulik from Zuse. Uh, but and, uh, it works in general. Uh, everything is uh, available or hypercalls needed to DOM0 uh, EFI support is uh, working. But uh, sadly, uh, sadly, only EFI, EFI loader is uh, uh, supported, uh, which led to the, a lot of complaints on uh, Zen Devel that uh, users could not use uh, Grab2 to load the uh, uh, Zen, uh, Zen uh, environment. Uh, it is very difficult to configure uh, Zen with EFI loader because you must prepare a special uh, text file with configuration. And it is not very convenient if you would like to do some tests. So uh, I decided to work on uh, 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 EFI support uh, for Zen uh, in uh, Grab. It was look at the beginning quite easy, but it is not very easy. First, uh, first of all, uh, out of the box, Grab and Grab2 uh, does not support loading uh, uh, Zen on uh, EFI platform. It could be done to some extent by fake BIOS and chain loader, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, so it is not re reliable. Uh, so I started work on uh, Grab2 support because uh, if you would like to uh, load uh, using Grab uh, uh, Zen on EFI platform, you must use multi-boot protocol version 2. Uh, multi-boot protocol version 1 does not support uh, EF, uh, EFI platforms. Uh, so I, I was started uh, looking into details uh, of code and uh, I realized that Zen is uh, built, uh, uh, Zen, uh, Zen uh, bootloader, let's say, it is uh, strictly tied to uh, multi-boot uh, uh, version 1, which does not allow us to uh, load uh, Zen hypervisor on uh, EFI using multi-boot protocol. It, it, it will be, uh, it will be uh, so difficult. So I, I decided to write uh, this loader and replace uh, this multi-boot uh, version uh, one structure with more, uh, some, uh, some more generic. Why we could not use uh, structure from multi-boot uh, version one? It was prepared mainly for machines with BIOS, which means you could not pass information from EFI, for example, like. ACPI tables uh, about uh, pointers to uh, runtime services or something like that. So I decided to write this thing. It is almost ready. I, I'm doing some tests. And uh, it uh, allowed me to work on uh, uh, Grab2 uh, Grab loader for Zen uh, on EFI uh, platform. But uh, I encountered uh, another issue which is linked uh, with uh, grab to uh, memory maps, let's say. Uh, what does it mean? It means that um, there is a special structure uh, passed uh, from uh, multi-boot protocol 2 describing memory map. But this structure it contains this memory map 
it, it describes a uh, memory map uh, and it contains only limited uh, types of memory, which means you could describe only memory RAM, reserved, and ACPI uh, CPI regions. Uh, so, you can, uh, for example, uh, inform, in this case, Zen, about, uh, about regions where is stored uh, runtime services, which is needed to, for example, get the date time uh, from, uh, uh, from platform set variables. Sadly, Grab2 uh, maps, uh, maps those regions with uh, uh, runtime services to reserved regions, which means we are not able to differentiate in Zen between, uh, uh, between reserved regions and uh, regions containing, uh, containing uh, runtime services. In this situation, I thought that at first I will be able to use uh, boot services to get full memory map from EFI. But sadly, Grab2, uh, 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 before, uh, in, uh, just before jumping to Zen code, calls exit boot services, which means that you are not able to get information about memory map from a platform. Uh, as I said yesterday, uh, uh, as I heard yesterday, there are some patches from Grab2 uh, to uh, fix this issue, but I didn't saw uh, that, and I'm not sure how, how it works. So uh, currently, I decided that I will make workaround, and I will map all reserved regions, and then I will assume that there is a, there is a somewhere in reserved regions. Uh, live uh, runtime services. I, I agree this is not the best solution and it is work around. And uh, I'm going to, I think that there are two possibilities to fix it. One of them is to disable this, uh, uh, this function which uh, calls exit boot services before jumping to uh, Zen code in Grab2. Another one, it is Go ahead. But kernel these days will mostly assume that you're going to boot it as an But Linux kernel, uh, Linux kernel does not use multi-boot protocol. But um, I'm yes. not sure how it works, how a loader for Linux kernel works. But I suppose that there is also the same issue because. As I remember, this exit boot uh, services function no, is called in any in, in, in case. I'm not sure. The, the Grub2 is patched or fixed. Um, it everybody, is fi everybody ships a version which is capable of booting the Linux kernel, which is a peak of executable. Which, which version is fixed? Because I checked Every version. distribution's version. Um, it is not upstream patch. Yeah, grab upstream. I'd rather. I, no, I've, I I've died. <laughs> Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe I missed something, but as I saw, uh, the latest version is 2.0, as I remember. Uh, that's right? Grub upstream is not something you ever want to deal with. Deal with the sensible <laughs> version of Grub that's in the distributions. Grub, yeah, no. we are talking about Grub, Grub 2. Yeah, Grub 2 is fairly crack inspired as well. It's not as bad as Grub 1. But the Linux kernel has the EFI stub, it is a peak off executable which can be signed. Yeah. And then you do your own thing. You are invoked with boot services still available. The, the kernel's EFI stub will then get all the information it wants and then invoke the kernel via its old booting interface, which is what you can and should still be doing. Okay, okay. but uh, there is a question. As I correctly understand, uh, Grab2 upstream version is not uh, uh, in current development. I should not care about it. That's right. Grab two. Grab two. I, mean, I think about Grab two. Still, I gra think about Grab two. I've forgotten Grab one entirely. Excuse me. I have entirely forgotten Grab one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great. But but he's got a point. Um, if you essentially Linux needs to find out its maps as well. 
Um, and Linux doesn't even use anything remotely close to a multiple protocol. It just doesn't even have a clue on what regions there are available. So it has to ask the firmware for all of those. So it yeah. has to be able to do that. And if Grub2 is able to boot, to boot Linux, it, you know, with those features available that you can ask the firmware on where, where you, your regions are, um, it has to be possible for Zen just as well. And the real benefit to having Zen booted in the same way as Linux on EFI, uh, yeah, as far as possible, because... But we, could, uh, we can't not use uh, a Linux loader for it. Well, have its own stuff, which may well be derived from a Linux loader, but... We are forced to use... The point in the patches we have to grub to is to not use any of the stuff that you're using the Linux loader. It's not the Linux command in grub2. It's a new command called Linux EFI, which isn't, oh, really, I didn't know about which isn't really EFI specific at all. Sorry, isn't really Linux specific at all. It is just load image. Is, is it available in uh, grub2 grub upstream? Are you sure? No, grub2 upstream loves to do all the stupid stuff that it really shouldn't be doing about invoking the Linux okay. boot protocol directly, and it does all kinds of crack-inspired stuff it shouldn't do, and is re resistant to just invoking the EFI okay. image as it should. So the patch isn't upstream yet, but keep using it. Everybody else is. <laughs> okay, as I correctly understand, I should not care about Grab2 upstream. Yeah, right? Okay. <laughs> Which version should I, I, I use? <laughs> Any with the patch applied. <laughs> I, I, And yeah. we'll fix your secure boot issues as well. Yeah, exactly. I, I would like to mention about that. So you get a piggyback of all the secure boot work that's being done with... But I, I, I have a question here because what is the... Uh, currently distributions would like to... Uh, in EFI, uh, ENFI platform, currently distributions tend to use uh, Gummy Boot or Gap2? But fixed grub too. Yeah. <laughs> We've Excuse me, I, I can cut you. <laughs> okay. That's that's <laughs> that's nice. I, I was uh, uh, once I was looking for uh, uh, solution for the, these issues which I mentioned here, and there there are some discussions on the grab tool list, but there is no consensus how to solve them. <laughs> and this is this is the main, main point. Okay. Gummy boot supports multi boot to, uh, to protocol. But, I mean, in Fedora case, ships with Zen support under EFI uh, and boots it via Grub2. So where today you take Zen and it's an EFI application yeah. directly from the EFI Yeah. Um, what Gummy Boot and perhaps Grub2 do is let you boot EFI applications from Exactly. But not using multiple, using EFI. I understand. But uh, uh, in this case, configuration of uh, Zen is quite difficult because, as you know, you must uh, uh, prepare a special uh, text file with configuration, which is not very, uh, uh, very flexible, let's say, because... So because you're talking basically, in the today's world, Zen is itself acting as the bootloader, mm. whereas with yeah. Yummy Boot and Grub2, the idea is that you use the bootloader as the, the menu system, the, and, but the resulting thing then just gets passed to the, yeah. to the application as, as arguments. So I know that's like what the ARM guys want to do as well when they do EFI, it's a similar model. And to be honest, all of my knowledge of this stuff comes from talking to ARM people, so maybe it isn't totally <laughs> x86 relevant. But under current Fedora distribution and others, did you just say yeah, so Susan does it? And it adds it to this target in Grub2 and it boots it as an EFI executable and it just works. Yes, it should, it should work. Because they're using the fixed Grub2 and in both <laughs> Okay. Okay. It's clear now. It, it okay. might be worth to just ask Jan because I mean he, he is working all the EFI stuff. 
and I'm pretty sure he has pretty good knowledge on whether it does work already with GRUB2, and I, I'd be like 95% sure it does. It's yeah, yeah. All there. yeah, yeah. Yes, I know, I know. Do you think uh, uh, that uh, maybe it is, uh, maybe it is a wrong way to work on multi-boot two-protocol support? Maybe I should drop it and uh, go to uh, support uh, EFI uh, application simply. If your only motivation for multi-boot two support was EFI, then I would suggest that's the case, yes. Uh, I would, the main motivation here is to support GRAP2 or something like that, to simplify, because as you may know, uh, there's a, you, an UEFI could use a bootloader or something like that, but this loader is crappy for me. It, it, is, it, it is crappy. And that is why a lot of people are asking for something like uh, GRAP2 or, uh, sorry, <laughs> or something like that. And uh, that is why I, I think that it is worth uh, to work on, 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 on support uh, for, from, uh, for GRAP. But is using GRAP2 to boot. Um, if you look at any like of the Fedora's or OpenSUSE, yeah. or I'm pretty sure the next generation enterprise distros are going to use the exact same thing as the current open ones are, um, it, it is all converging to GRAP2. I don't see why you, know, you should be reproduce, or re redoing the work they are doing. Okay, it means that, that uh, uh, the simplest way, as I currently uh, understand, it is load, just uh, uh, load EFI applications and don't care about uh, uh, multi-boot stuff, let's say. And when he says any way just distribution, he means anybody who is ever going to care about getting secure boot, work, secure boot working. Yeah. So in this model, how does an NLRD get loaded? Just because then has the issue that it has more than one NLRD, so we figure out. I would have to look it up, but I think they're passed as arguments when you load the... Ex I believe it's loaded by the stub. Yeah. I believe that is the I would have to check. You may have a little bit of work to do there, but fundamentally this is the way forward. Could you repeat your question? Mode. Because I, 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 so the question was? Well, I, I yeah. heard the rest, but yeah. I, I So did. what I was asking was how does the, when you're booting Linux via this, this yeah. EFI, uh, application method, how does the initRD get loaded? Uh, and who right. does that? And we've concluded that we think <laughs> that what happens is that the grub shell will add a command line option, initRD equals path to a file. And then the Linux EFI stub will parse that and use that to load the initRD off the disk using you know, the EFI equivalent of an in 13. It's a good point. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And so okay. we would need to do the same in Zen for the DOM0 kernel and DOM0 initRD and find some mechanism for Okay, so that might be... Okay, I will check it. It is a good point, I think. Okay, I think that's it regarding this. this uh, there are other questions in regards to this? So the, the Fedora Grub 2 package has 482 patches. <laughs> Can, for like, Grub 2. For Grub 2, yeah. yeah. So um, is this really a viable upstream? And I, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and should we be like looking at other options as a community other than Grub 2? No. <laughs> so it's kind of like Linux 6, maybe? It has. It sounds like we're in the open office situation where a lot of distros are going to have assets that seem to everyone wants, and I'm sure you just want one of the other numbers. And maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can do that.
So it means that we should b build GAP version two, free. Uh, I, I, I don't <laughs> think I want to have anything to do with any Grub code ever. <laughs> like I, I do it under <laughs> only, only under much uh, duress. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Okay. It makes my more problems. I think. Okay. Let's go to, oh, sorry. DOM0 kernels. Currently, uh, EFI support for host in DOM0 kernels uh, exists only in ZUSE kernel, as I know. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Upstream kernel does not support EFI uh, in DOM0 currently. There were some work made by uh, Liang Tang from Oracle, sorry, from Oracle initially, but those patches were dropped. Uh, and uh, s from time to time on Zendevil, I appears uh, some version, uh, some updates for uh, this series of patches made by Eric Shelton, as, as I remember. But uh, they are not ready to upstream. Uh, I hope that we will, be, we will be able to work on it, but um, I'm not sure. If, if it doesn't happen, I will, I will take over this uh, project after finishing these issues with GAP2, uh, I hope. And simplest things, EFI supporting West. Does not work. <laughs> Does? There were some issues with, uh, 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 there were some issues uh, and it, it is uh, in, in working progress, let's say. Uh, Yeah. I haven't seen that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, it was something trivial. I sent patches. I've had OVMF working with CSM oh. support so it can boot legacy BIOS operating maybe you systems should as well under Zen. Yeah, I, I will try it again when I get home and I will could come you into Cambridge and beat you. <laughs> could <laughs> but you yes, could you OVF, OVMF, if you spell it right and yeah. get it right in the make files, will work in Zen. It should. <laughs> I have tested it. Okay. And I didn't spend much time testing EFI boot because I was doing the CSM and making legacy bus okay. stuff boot under. Could OVMF. you repost? But yeah, it works. Right, my name appears in your inbox. Go find it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any more questions? It looks that I should think about Grab2 once again. <laughs> well, my, my, my main advice is that um, just don't diverge from everybody else. Um, go and sit down together with the other distros and figure out what they're doing and do the same thing. Um, if, if everybody wants to do Linux EFI boot, then go do Linux EFI boot together. If everybody wants to do multi-boot version 2, um, that's the you know, thing to do. But don't, don't run off on your own path and just do something, um, figuring that you know, upstream might be especially different. especially true when it comes to secure boot. Yeah. Point, I think. There were some questions here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to clarify, the OVF support is just for HPMs. Yes. Could, could you repeat? Uh, the OVFMF support is just for hardware virtualization. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there any thought to EFI booting paravert guests? I don't think so. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, it, it seems like there's some uh, common configuration, some other ways in which you know, just uh, I mean, guest guest operating systems might be trying to unify on uh, giving 
being able to support EFI boot because that's a common bootloader protocol. So I don't know if it's interesting to think about having a Zen e para virtualized guest pick up what kernel and what NRD and everything else else should boot over the EFI protocol. Uh, maybe it, it will be interesting, but uh, as I know, there are some ideas to drop PV guests uh, uh, okay, yeah. totally. I think it, it, it is the matter of five years or more because it, it depends about on PVH support, I think. Sure. This is the, this is the, the goal uh, currently, as I, as I saw, the, uh, more and more people using HVM gas, and I don't, don't care, as I know, especially Antony does not care about PV. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you.